How y'all doing? I'm going to wait for y'all to finish giving your offering and your tithe. I want to say hello to everybody who is watching online. We love you. We are grateful that you are connected. And I believe that the word that's getting ready to be released is for you and your household as well. So turn the volume up. Turn your Netflix off. DVR your favorite program because the Holy Ghost is about to come into your house. Your dog is about to be filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are finished with your offering, I'd like you to do me a favor and I'd like you to give God a preemptive crazy praise in expectation of the word. All it'll take is 10 to 15 seconds. If you are a first, second, or third time visitor, feel no obligation. But if you are still on that word from last week, if you still feel God telling you to put your hands up, if God has done a miracle for you in the last seven days, I want to see a couple hands of some things God has, some folk that have seen something supernatural break out in your life. I know you already high-fived a couple people. High-five two more people and just tell them, I'm hype, I'm hype. Steve, she had her hand up. You didn't even, don't play her. Psalm 24, starting at the seventh verse, says this. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. That means pause. Think about it for a minute. Revelation chapter 3, 7 and 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one no one no no enemy no family member no habit no hater no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Revelation chapter 3, 19 and 22. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Jesus wants to come eat some food with you. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Doors. Three scriptures, everlasting doors. Then we have open doors, right? And then he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door. So there's, there's some doors that you got to speak to, then there's some doors you got to grab. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. There's another scripture. I just want you to grab this little part. Now about that time, this is Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hands to, to harass some in the church. If anybody's messing with your peace, anybody's messing with your joy, anybody's messing with your family, if the devil's just coming after you, you need to be encouraged. This word is for you. 
Herod couldn't stand this thing called Christianity, so he started killing Christians. Second verse, he killed James, the brother, brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. And it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. He was going to wait till their big church service and he was going to kill Peter. He was going to either behead him like he did James or he was going to get the kid crucified. Peter was therefore kept in prison. Watch this. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. There's power in prayer. I know we're not used to prayer meeting. When I was growing up, they had prayer meeting was Tuesday night, and it was normally the church mothers in there, and they had the longest skirts in the world, and they still had a, a, a doily over the kneecap. You couldn't see their kneecaps. You just knew they had kneecaps, but they were, they were too holy to show you kneecap, barely showed you ankle. And, and so prayer meeting was sparsely attended. You might have 15 good saints in prayer meeting. Now, when there was food or there was a picnic, Everybody would come, people we hadn't ever seen. They didn't even come at Christmas. But let somebody put some ribs on a grill and let there be some Uno cards, and all of a sudden, everybody gets saved. <laughs> but there's something about prayer that moves God's heart and also puts the devil on the run. Somebody say constant prayer. Constant prayer, constant prayer was being offered by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out to kill him, that night, somebody say that night. I need you to catch this, Matt Zachary. This is that night. Some of y'all caught it. I'm going to rewind. I'm going to come over here. I'm not preaching a general message. I'm preaching a message for somebody to get free tonight. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough tonight. Somebody's miracle is here tonight. And I believe that God's about to release a word that in the next 15, 20 minutes, what you've been needing to hear, what you needed released in your life is going to be released, not tomorrow, but tonight. can somebody give God a praise tonight? Watch this, Cynthia. Peter was sleeping. Now he's about to get killed. And he's like, I might as well get a good night's rest if they're going to kill me in the morning. Do you know how much faith it takes to go to sleep? I don't know who this is for, but you need to take a nap. I don't care what's going on in your life, you need to take a nap. I don't know what they're going to do with my bills. I, you know it would just bless God's heart. Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. <sighs> see you in the morning. Yeah, because see, weeping endures for the night, but I'm trying to help somebody in here. We're going to stir this thing up in here tonight. We're going to... He was asleep, bound with two chains. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know rappers were in the Bible. That's amazing. He was bound with two chains between two soldiers, and there was a guard before the door. There's another door. Scott, there's always a door. The enemy's always guarding the door. Because he knows if you ever understood what was on the other side of the door, you wouldn't ask permission, you'd push him out the way. Some stuff you're gonna have to move out the way. Some of y'all a little too, too nervous and scary. God's looking for some, some thugs, some, some folk that... God's looking for somebody to just pump the devil. Get out the way, devil. Get behind me, devil. Get out the way of my purpose, devil. Get out the way of my door. Stop asking permission from devils. Go get what God has for you. Move that devil out the way. Stop worrying about what people are saying, what they're plotting, what they're planning. It doesn't matter. It's not their door. I feel a five second praise break right there. That night, he was asleep between two chains with two soldiers and a guard by the door. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison. Watch this. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up and said, arise quickly. Translation, get up, man. <laughs> and his chains fell off his hands. 
I don't know if you realize what I just said. You might have come in, I don't know what your bondage is, I don't know what your issues were. But tonight something broke in your favor. That's why you can lift your hands because the chains are, they're gone. Can somebody give God a chain breaking praise? The angel said, gird yourself and put on your sandals. And he said, put on your garment and follow me. Now, the whole time, Peter thought this was a dream. Long story short, let's get down. Let's get down to the 12th verse. When he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, and many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door, a girl named Rhoda. Anybody named Rhoda in here? Is your name Rhoda? Stand up, Rhoda. Rhoda, a miracle just hit your house. You've been faithful, you've been praying, you've been serving, you've been sowing, and the blessing is not just for you, it's for your whole family. And God has unlocked it this night. And whoever that is next to you, it touched him as well, and anybody on that road, because when God blesses, he doesn't localize the blessing. Anybody near you gets blessed, and the people who celebrate you get blessed. Let's go! I need a crazy praise break all the way from the front. breaking out in this room. We interrupt this regularly scheduled service to declare that the miracles have arrived. The Bible says Peter knocked. Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so glad she didn't even open the gate. They had been praying. The answer arrived. She got so excited, she forgot to open the door. <laughs> she runs in and tells the rest of the people who are still praying for Peter to get delivered. Peter's at the door. They said, girl, hush. That's crazy. Father, we pray right now. Set Peter free. Ah, Jesus. Loose here, devil, and let him go. I'm telling you, he's at the door. Hush, girl. It's not him. We're praying. Leave us alone. came to announce that what you've been praying for. <laughs> Fendi, I wish they could understand what I'm saying. What you've been praying for is. The title of my message is Get the Door. You ever been comfortable in your house, eating your food? Everything is right, the plate is hot, you got your bread, you got your Hawaiian rolls, you warmed them for about 12 seconds in the microwave. <laughs> you got your food right, you got your lemonade with a little bit of sweet tea. You know, some of y'all are vegans, whatever, so you drink fat-free water and whatever. <laughs> Rice cakes, whatever you do, bless your heart. Everything's right. You watch a Wheel of Fortune. You know the you know the puzzle. You know it. Don't ask for a T. Don't ask for a T. Oh. Next person gets it, and 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 then you get knock on the door. It's inconvenient because you're living your regularly scheduled life. But I need you to open the door because God is about to interrupt your life with your destiny. That's your destiny at the door. That's answered prayers at the door. Tell 
somebody get the door. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. God sent me here to, to let somebody know who has the faith to believe, and this is a prophetic word, that there have been doors that have been shut. You couldn't get in if you tried. And they're not just regular doors, they're everlasting doors. Stuff that people in your family been believing for generations. Grandmama had faith for it, didn't happen in her lifetime. Mama had faith for it, didn't happen yet. And here it is, and it's in your generation. And God says, now. I don't know who this is for, but I believe it's for somebody. But what you've been waiting on is not coming later, it's coming but there are some things that require a push in the spirit. And it says, lift up your head, O ye gates. The word gates is symbolic of principalities, powers, authorities, rulers that have been trying to hold your destiny hostage. And the declaration was, lift up your heads, O ye gates, which means get out of the way, devil. God is looking for some people that will declare in the atmosphere for the spiritual hindrances that have been attacking you to get out of the way. Now I know you want to act like you're sophisticated and you're not weird, so you don't want to say things out loud, but you can live your regularly scheduled life or you can go after the supernatural life and you can start speaking into the atmosphere and say, I bind every devil every word, every witch, every warlock, every curse, I cast it down and I declare there is an open heaven over my life. Ah. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Gates and doors. Now in ancient cities, you needed both. You needed both, Dre, you needed both. You needed a big old fence, big old wall, and you needed a, a gate, you needed, because you didn't want the enemy to get in. <laughs> Challenge is, the same walls that keep the enemy from getting in also stops provision from getting in. That's why I like this scripture, it says, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And who's coming in? The king of Some of us have been hiding behind walls. Self-imposed walls. Rooted in fear. We don't want anybody getting in. We want nothing going out. We have learned to live isolated. But God is saying, I'm getting ready to lift up not only the gates, but everlasting doors, and it's for the king of glory. God is about to bring his glory into areas of your life that have been shut off for years. Some of you have suffered a major heartbreak, and you said you'll never love again. I declare before the end of this year, the love you thought was impossible will be knocking on the door of your heart and your heart will have healed enough to receive it. Is there anybody that believes God for that one? Everlasting doors, those are doors that cannot be opened by natural means. There are some doors you need to speak to. You need somebody to speak to that. You need to speak to it, and some of y'all you, you, you are at a, a, a crossroads in your spiritual development. You can play it safe and play it cool. And, or you can start declaring the word of God out loud at weird times and locations. Walking past the bank, you're going to give me a loan. People are like, what? No, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the bank. Maybe you have a spouse that's not on fire for God, just walk home. <laughs> you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Just walk, put a little oil on, on your finger, just 
Girl, what is you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Keep watching football. What's wrong with you? You got a tick? No, I got Jesus, and you about to get him too. There are some things that have been held up in the spirit that God has declared the time for it to be released is right now. There are a couple of people in here, right, who are in this service that God did a right now miracle. God did a right now miracle, right? Can you just, you don't have to tell them, you can just put your hand up and testify that he did a, a right now miracle. I just, okay. So let me tell y'all about Peter because because Peter was getting ready to die. Herod was going to make an example of him because he was a loud Christian. He was an unapologetic Christian. And what better way to instill fear in the, the, the baby Christians than to kill one of the leaders? See, the reason why so much comes against you is because of what you carry. See, there are some people that have popularity. You got influence. I wish I could help. I like that, ma'am. I don't know what that is, but that was awesome. She just wound it up. Did you hear what I said? There are people who have authority, then there are people who have influence. As parents, you have authority over your kids. They don't want to dress like you. They want to dress like the people that they are influenced by. So you can have the money to buy the clothes. And you have the authority to say yes or no. But the influence for their choices comes from their peer group. The reason why the devil can't stand you is because whether you know it or not, so many people are watching you and secretly admiring you. It's not hate. They don't know what to say. Why don't she speak? She can't speak. She doesn't know what to say. She's trying to figure out who you are and what is that light that's on you. And they've never understood that. It's something God is doing. He's using you to draw people to, to him. Some people don't know what to say. So they say nothing. But you have influence. Stop selling yourself short. Stop minimizing your anointing. Stop walking around afraid. Be everything God created you to be. Walk in there with your Bible and your computer. Don't be ashamed of your Jesus. Everybody talking about the latest power episode at the water cooler. Why don't you tell them where the real power is? Tell somebody, get the door. Peter, Pastor Clayton, he was, he was as good as dead. It was over. It was over like a Range Rover. It was, he was gone. And what did he decide to do? I'm going to sleep. He didn't take a nap because the Bible said he had his garment off. He had to put on his garment and his gird his loins. That means he took his pants off. He was just in his boxers, in jail. <laughs> Shoes off. Feet smelling like vinegar, corn chips, and Middle Eastern prison. Just. <laughs> no. But while he's sleeping, the church was praying. I want to encourage you. While you've been worrying, somebody's been praying. And God heard their prayers, and he's sending an angel to come unlock the, the door and get the chains off of you. Some of the stuff is generational. It's coming off of you. It's coming out of you. Things that have been held up are being loose. You're about to get free and you're about to give birth. You're about to produce fruit. God is giving you double for your trouble. Some of y'all need to get excited. I said double for your trouble. But Pastor Johnny, some things require an immediate response. When God prompts you, you got to move right then. Tell somebody right now. 
Pastor Lisa, this was deep to me. The Bible says the angel, the light shone in the prison. The angel came. He didn't gently caress his face, Mama Doty. You know, in, 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 in the uh, movies, the angels always come up, fear not, for the Lord is with thee wherever thou goest. This angel was from the fifth war. He had treads and a grill. He rode in on some 24s, sitting on spinners. Some of my suburban people are like, what is that? I don't even, what is, I don't even know. What are spinners? That's a group from the 70s. I really like them. No, 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 never mind. The angel didn't gently caress him. He didn't nudge him on the shoulder. The Bible says he struck him. <laughs> Ow! Get up, man! We got to go. Now, this, this messes with me because if God is setting me free, why do I have to rush? Because some miracles are time sensitive. Thank you, Deidre. Nobody else. No, Michael, please. Did you hear what I said? Some miracles are time sensitive. That's why you had to get here tonight. You about 14 minutes away, about 13 minutes and 57 seconds away. You're about four minutes away. The angel struck him on the side, said, get dressed. You don't have any time to waste. You have a limited time to get through the door. And the only way the door was open is because somebody else was praying. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I, you, need to, you need to intensify your prayers over the next seven days because there is a supernatural door that is about to open and it is time sensitive. Literally, you gotta, as soon as you hear God say, now, get up then, get dressed then. If he says, drive out to the neighborhood now, touch the house now, walk to the bank now, get to the store now, go get your business license now. Get your spouse and pray now. Put the oil on the kids now. Go to the college now. Go to the financial aid office now. Go now, now, now. There's a time-sensitive miracle. The door is open, but you got to get on up. Get on up. Stay on the scene like a prison machine. I feel the Holy Ghost. There were other prisoners, Cindy, in the prison, but only Peter got free. Because it was his door. There are some people who can't stand you, and they've been watching your life, and they're going to see the door, and they're going to try to get through. Because they know if it happens for you, it's got to be good. But God... It's telling you move quick. So by the time they get up, you already through and the door is... I'm tr I wish I had some jumpers in here. I wish I had... I wish I had a couple spinners here. Any, any rowdy ones in the back? I see you all the way in the back. High five at the house, high five at the house, online, online, online. This is why you can't get upset with the people that God cuts off. What he's doing in this season, he's doing suddenly. He's moving folks suddenly. Relationships turn overnight suddenly. It was perfect and then it wasn't suddenly. And it's not the devil, it's God getting you free. Because even if they look good, they're a chain. Some chains are attractive, but they're still chains. Some chains feel good, but they're still chains. Some chains are familiar, but they're still chains. And God is sending his word to set you free.
Tell somebody it's my door. It's my door. This is so important. Doors are for three things. You got to write this down. This is big for you, Steve-O. Doors are for assignment, alignment, and announcement. Actually, assignment, alignment, and appointment. How many ladies in here get their hair done? If you don't get your hair done, just tell a story in here. I'm sorry, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Your edges is like, <laughs> but we love you. <laughs> Let me ask you something. I don't care what you got going on. If you have a good hairdresser, you better be on time. Am I talking right? If your appointment is at 5 and you show up at 6.15, you might miss yours. But it's funny because women don't often miss hair appointments and it's spiritual. Because the Bible says the glory of a woman is in her hair. You don't even know it, but what you're really saying is, I don't want to miss the glory. But if you could take what was natural and translate it to the spirit, God is saying, if I could get you to understand, woman of God, who I am making you, who I am fashioning you to be, if you understood that the appointment is not for an external expression, but an internal work, if you understood that I'm trying to produce glory out of you, that I'm getting you... There's an appointment scheduled. Oh my God, I'm trying to help somebody in here. The doors are for alignment, assignment, and appointment. The doors God is opening now are doors of alignment. The things that have been incongruent in your life, they're going to start working themselves out. But then there are doors for assignment. Tell somebody my assignment. Very important. It's my assignment. Uh -huh. yeah. Say it. It's my assignment. Put, you know, <laughs> this, this. don't get mad at me when I walk through my door. It's my door. I want you to walk through your door because my door is my assignment. People didn't understand and still don't understand, how could you walk through certain doors? That's my assignment. Everybody's assignment is different. That's why you got to get in alignment. God, what are you saying? What's the purpose? And then let me walk through my door. The frustration in your life is you keep trying to bring people through your door that don't fit your assignment. They don't fit. And it ain't about size. It's about vision. It's about purpose. If they don't have the right purpose, vision, then they don't need to be walking through your door. Doors are for assignment, alignment, and appointment. Psalm 102 and 13, you will arise and have mercy on Zion, or the people of God, for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Tell somebody it's time. And it ain't just time, it's the set time. Oh, I wish I could get you to understand what I just declared. You just stepped in to the set time. The door has been opened, and it was opened by Jesus himself. Assignment, alignment, and appointment. I have an appointment. That's my door. I'm going to walk through my door, and everything on the other side of that door has my name on it. Anybody ever expected a package at the house, but you knew that you had to be at the house? Because they weren't just going to leave it at the door. You had to. Anybody in here gone through too much to just leave your miracle at the door? No, I'm going to wait right here until I see the Lord bringing it. I'm going to open the door myself. I've cried too many. No, bring it here. I'll sign. Nobody else. No, that's the wrong house. This house. That miracle is for me. Am I talking to more than the 47 people that are responding? So then grab these principles because doors do a couple of things. Doors draw distinction, demarcation, and destination. 
Doors draw distinction, demarcation, and destination. Every house has a different door. My house is distinct. My calling is distinct. Therefore, the door that I walk through is distinct. Don't let people treat your door common because they don't understand your journey. I believe that there are some people in here, you're in a relationship with somebody who treats you common. And they say things like, don't get too big for your britches, don't get ahead of yourself, or you think you all of that. Those are the people you need to say goodbye to in this season because you are all of that. And the bag of chips and some seasoned crab legs with the drawn butter and the potatoes. Thank you, I receive it and I'm hungry. They don't get this big fasting. I don't fast, I slow. <laughs> Stop letting people talk you down from the miracle you are. You are distinct. And stop letting people paint over your door. Don't let people imprint their, their biases, prejudices, and insecurities onto your door. You're distinct. Stop dumbing it down and minimizing who you are and being less artistic and less creative and less funny. You're not allowed to tell all your dreams because you're afraid of how they're going to respond. Why are you limiting yourself to people who can't see you? Get free from these people. The Bible says the fear of man is a snare. Don't be afraid of anybody in this season. God has made you distinct. That's why you got to be careful who you let in your house. The door is the doorway to your house. Your house is your heart, and your heart is a house of love. Wait a minute, that's a movie. That's five heartbeats. Some of y'all didn't catch that. A heart is a house of love, and I learned that it, hey, a heart is a house. We're going to watch it tonight, ain't we? We're going hard in the house. <laughs> if you ain't never seen that movie, it's good. <laughs> Office hours are from nine to, okay, let me get back. You gotta be careful, John, who you let in your house because you pay too much for your house. Don't let people who treat your, your journey and your miracle common walk into your house and leave your door open. They don't know what's valuable in your house. Don't just let people come in and treat your holy things common. Your heart is not common. Your tears are not common. Your journey is not common. So don't let people walk through a distinct door treating you like trash. When I was growing up, my grandmother, my mother paid for my grandmother to get central air. We used to have fans, just put the fans in the window. Anybody remember? The, some of the kids here like, I don't, what's, what's a fan? Anyway, just, y'all get on my nerves. We remember just putting fans in the window to blow more hot air in. Some of us had the, those ghetto heaters in the winter. They were so high, you kept the window open in winter. Anyway, that's, anyway, that's another, another sermon. But when she got central air, she made sure that people closed that door. Because what was inside was so valuable that we didn't just want it escaping. It cost too much. Let somebody leave that door open and that air conditioner running. I know somebody better close that door. You better close that door. You're letting all my good air. God is saying some of y'all have left your doors open. And too many people are receiving the fragrance of your hard work, but have put nothing in on it. You need to close the doors. Turn off the phone. Say bye-bye. Start covering yourself because you're letting all your good air out. Ooh. So doors are for distinction, demarcation, and destination. Demarcation means you draw a line in the sand. Tell somebody, draw a line. 
Tell somebody that you need to draw a line. In this season, when you understand your value, you're not going to let people cross the line. I love you, but you're not going to say whatever you want to say to me. I'm anointed. You're not going to just do whatever you want. You're not going to treat me any kind of way. I know who I am. The line is in the sand. You cross the line, this relationship is over. This friendship is over. Bless you as you go. But I'm not putting up with people who don't understand my value. There is a line in the sand. God has opened a door for my life. And then finally, a door is for destination. Tell somebody I'm going somewhere. See, in this season, the door is not to get to another room. It's to get to another dimension. I'll say it again for people who have faith. You're known for one thing. God's about to release favor for you in another thing. I said they know you for one thing, but they're about to release favor. God's gonna release favor in another thing. They just think you're one of the nice people that comes to work every day. They don't know that you have a multi-billion dollar business in your mind and in your heart. And before 2018 is over, God is gonna establish what was impossible last year. You're gonna walk through the door this year. You're getting ready to get yes, you're getting ready to get invited. You're getting ready to make the team. You're getting ready to get the scholarship. You're getting ready to get that promotion. You're getting ready to get the resources. God's about to open the door because he can trust you once you walk through it. God says, I'll establish you if you promise to give me glory. So then don't wait to give him glory. Give him glory right now. I see you, mama. That's your baby, and you still giving glory. She got the baby on her lap, and she's still giving glory. Don't let her give glory by herself. There are some people that God is trusting you with a door that nobody else could walk through. It is a door of favor, a door of influence, a door of increase, a door of power, a door of prominence, a door of authority, a door that unlocks multi-generational wealth. It is a door that only you could walk through. That's why you had to live the life you've lived, cry the tears you've cried, lost the friends you lost, and lost the relationships you lost, because God had to take you through all that. He loved you too much not to make sure you were ready once he opened the door. Lift up your head, all ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. Devils will try. See, Stone, they're going to try. They're going to try. They try. They gonna try bread. When are they gonna try me? It gets nervous, Scotty, when the devil's looking at your blessing through the fence. You know people are looking. You may not even say nothing. They always somewhere just. Why she got all that? How come he got that? I can't stand them. You couldn't stand me before I had it. This is a season God is just showing you who everybody is. God show me who everybody is. If you couldn't celebrate me now, ooh, God, just show me, just, just lurk it. Just, like that lady on the, on the. <laughs> but here's why I'm not afraid, Scott, of devils peeking through the fence. Because when Job and Satan were having a conversation, God said, you consider my servant Job? 
See, does he fear God for nothing? You put a hedge of protection around all he has. Which means the enemy was walking around the fence and he was looking for a way in. What the Holy Ghost told me two days ago, he said, devils can't climb fences. They can look all day, but they can't climb into your blessing. The devil has not been given permission to touch your miracle. So they can look all day, but they can't touch this. I wish I had an MC Hammer dancer pant on right now, cause you can't touch it. I've prayed too much, I've cried too much, I've interceded too much, and you can look all you want, you can hate all you want, but you can't touch what God has ordained for me. That's my door, that's my miracle, it's my time! Can't touch it. Can't touch it. Can't touch it. Stop it. All right. My, 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 my. Holy Ghost cold so hard. Make me say, oh my God. All right. Stand up. Give God a can't touch this praise. If you know the enemy can't put his hand on anything that God has put I dare you to give God a can't touch this praise. I dare you to find somebody on your road that'll worship. He can't touch your miracle. You rejoice. Your miracle's not going anywhere. You put a smile on your face. The door is open. Favor is on you. If everybody did what you do, you would still get the job because you got favor. money, baby. I know it's late and you gotta get your kids ready for school. But tonight God has opened the door. So you might as well pray Father, the door is open. The time is now. Doors are for assignment, alignment, and appointment. Doors draw, distinction, demarcation, and one more, destination. Thank you, Pastor Craig, because the destination is the set place where the influence and the authority that I've been gifted will be necessary. God is not wasting your experiences in places and people who couldn't receive it. He's putting you in rooms you couldn't walk in if you tried. Only God could do it. That's why only God can get the glory. Father, bless this church and those watching online. I declare by the power of your spirit that tonight, when we leave this church, some of us gonna get in the car, roll our windows down and start praising. Some of us are gonna blow our horns in the parking lot. Hey, I double dog dare you. If the Astros won the World Series and the Rockets won the, the NBA title, which they will this year. Y'all would be screaming, blowing horns, throwing confetti. But the miracle you've been waiting on and the door that's been held up, the devil had to let it go. And I love this. They were praying and the answer was at the door. Some of y'all are gonna pray and get a text. Some of y'all gonna pray and hear the email alert. Some of y'all gonna pray and they gonna walk in the office. Some of you might even get a knock at the door. Don't
won't be shocked when the unexpected, unbelievable, impossible shows up because it's time for that level of the supernatural. Get the door, get the door, get the door. Jesus is at the door. Miracles are at the door. Favor is at the door. Breakthrough is at the door. Abundance is at the door. Overflow is at the door. Power is at the door. Father, seal this word and unlock miracles for every person and every family in this church and those watching online. If you were here and you've never given your life to Jesus, this is what I want you to do. This is going to take 15 seconds. If you don't have to leave, don't. You've never given your life to Jesus or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. On the count of three, you remain standing. Everybody else sit down. One, two, three. Harvest. Harvest. Salvation. Rededication. Oh, y'all can do better than that. God is doing miracles. God is unlocking doors. I said God is unlocking doors. Hey, welcome home, bro. Welcome home, my man. Welcome home, sis. Come on, if somebody is near you standing, shake their hand, tell them welcome home. While you're standing, I want you to say this prayer. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that paid for my sins. You are my Savior and my Lord. My life is new, and I thank you that I'm walking through the open door, not by my works, but by your blood and that empty tomb. It is so, in Jesus' name, amen. We believe if you prayed that simple prayer, you just got saved.